He's now with his insight in this past week as the host of the WGN Political Report, that young man, Paul Lisnick. And we have a Happy lot. Friday night. Hi. Yeah. Yes, lots to go. Lots to talk about this week. I think we're going to start with the migrant controversy. Yep. I was at this meeting at South Shore uh, last night with these angry residents. I mean, this is such a tough issue. You have all of these folks who live in this neighborhood saying, you know, we've been asking for resources for a long time. The anger there of where is this money coming from now for this other population? You have Brandon Johnson coming into office. Yeah. How does he walk this line and, and where does he begin, you think, really tackling this issue? You know, part of the, the answer is within your what you just said. And what I mean by that is I, you see on social media people going after him now. Why isn't he doing this? He's not the mayor yet. So it's really, it's not right. his thing. He's got to sit back and watch. Um, some have raised the question, you and I have talked about it, should Governor Pritzker declare it as an emergency? But right. this is such a sensitive topic. Look, everybody wants the migrants to be properly handled and properly cared for and fed mm -hmm. and all of that. But the people that are on the other side of this, of course, are making it very clear they need resources, they need things. So it's a very difficult, as you say, line to walk, right. both for Pritzker on the state end, and certainly it's going to be for Mayor Johnson. Now, I think his, high, his heart is with those folks. It's mm -hmm. going to have to be about funding, but he's going to have to find a way to make sure he's also addressing the needs of other Chicagoans mm -hmm. who live here and have lived here, and they have needs as well. He's going to have to do both. When you're talking about Pritzker, people mentioned during the pandemic at McCormick Place, they built this hospital within a matter of a week yeah. with cots and medical staff. Does Good something point. like that need to happen here? Should this be considered a state of emergency? Well, it depends on the numbers. First of all, we know that, that, that Mayor Lightfoot reached out to Governor Abbott of, of Texas, which is where this is coming from, mm -hmm. and said, stop sending them here. We want to, we care and we want to do it right, but we don't have the resources. And he, of course, responded in his very heartfelt way by saying, go talk to the White House. So that right. was his way of saying, I'm going to keep doing this. Right. So this has become, you know, what should be a humanitarian issue clearly has become political and I understand that people feel political about it with a lot of things but the bottom line is these are human beings these are people that have to be cared for and uh, Governor Abbott probably could take a couple of lessons and maybe sort of being a little more right. humane towards these folks. Let's move on to another topic. Sure. The ComEd verdict came down on Tuesday. Sentencing now is set to happen but not until January. Yeah. Many months down the line. Why is it delayed so much and it puts it pretty close to the start of Madigan's trial then in April? That may be partially why. First of all, it starts on January 11th. There's four different dates for the four mm -hmm. different defendants, all convicted on all counts. What's going to happen now, maybe, is that the prosecutors will be talking to these four. I mean, they're all going to do some prison time. They pretty much have to. But you can do 50 years or 20 years, or we can talk about getting you two or three. So I think you're going to see prosecutors, if they need these defendants to assist them in the Madigan prosecution, perhaps somebody like McLean, mm -hmm. they may talk to him and say, let's strike a deal. What do you want to do? Now, they can't make a judge give him less time, but they can go to the judge in a sentencing memo and say, look, Your Honor, he's been very helpful. He's been critical to what we've been doing, and so we recommend that you go easier. That's up to the judge. But the bottom line is, the part of the timing would be that. The other part is, they do need time. There's a whole process that, that the Bureau of Prisons goes through right now, their entire background. Lots of stuff happens. It's difficult to happen so immediately. But it is interesting that it will be just a few months before yeah. the Madigan trial starts. For sure. Okay, another interesting one, yep. this Illinois book ban bill, we would become the first state in the country to do this. I know this centers around Downers Grove North and South High School. From what I remember, there was a the Proud Boys getting involved with a book. I think it was called Gender Queer. Yeah. Uh, so tell us what would this legislation do? So what, what it, it, it's sort of the, look, you have DeSantis in Florida saying woke has no home here. Mm -hmm. And so whatever woke means. And then in Illinois, you're basically saying, look, anti-woke has no home here, whatever that means. But the bottom line to it is, look, Governor Pritzker, whether you like him, don't like him, the, his philosophy is this needs to be a welcoming state, respectful state, people of the LGBTQ plus community and, every, and pretty much everybody else deserve respect. So, and I understand there are some parents who say, but there's some books that could be available to the kids and, and they're, they're, they're explicit. There may be certain book issues, but that should be discussed between the parents, the teachers, make those decisions. But I think basically this is Pritzker saying the, the government of the state needs to stay out of that. Banning books is something that happened in other parts of the country in many years. It's coming back in some places like Florida. And I just think it's something Pritzker just doesn't want to play a role in. And this is the first state that will make sure it doesn't happen. Let's put the focus on some of the Donald Trump cases mm -hmm. right now. Uh, the E. Jean Carroll uh, rape uh, case. That right. trial just rested, um, but there is some hint from uh, the former president that yeah, it's really yeah, maybe I'll testify. So his lawyer, uh, Takapina, said he's not testifying. But Trump is in Scotland, and he said sort of off the cuff, 
No, I'm going to go testify. Mm -hmm. So obviously the judge got wind of that. And so he said to Tacopina at the end of the week, so he's not testifying? No, you're, you're, you're resting? And he goes, judge, yes, but you know who I'm dealing with. So the bottom line to it is the judge went on to say, OK, look, Mondays are closing arguments, but I'm going to give Trump until Sunday at 5 o'clock p.m. to show up. And if he wants to testify, the judge's words, we'll see what happens, which is a famous fr uh, Trump phrase. Mm -hmm. So but I think if Trump says he wants to testify, he will. Takapina will do everything he can to keep Trump from testifying. But it's Trump's decision, not Takapina's. Mm -hmm. Now, he's also set to appear on CNN in a presidential town yeah. hall next week. Wednesday night, Caitlin Collins will be the moderator of that. A lot of flack about that because, you know, with everything going on. But look. Let's talk about that next week, because if indeed there's a lot of a, a, a lot of um, a flack from her in terms of how she sets him up, if she opens up and say, what are your plans for the economy, as opposed to let's talk about the fact that some uh, there have just been seditious conspiracy charges and guilty verdicts and whatever and, and make it tough for him and give him real questions, then it may be worth doing. We'll see how she plays it. Okay, let's talk about what's coming up on the show Sunday. Yeah, um, so this will be kind of fun. This Sunday, I've got uh, Rep, uh, Congressman Jonathan Jackson, right? Jesse Jackson, mm -hmm. senior son, will be coming on talking about um, uh, Washington, former CNN and Washington Post commentator Chris Saliza just wrote a book about presidents oh, and sports. Yeah. What sports presidents play? Yeah. You'll hear about Obama and his his um, effort with golf and uh, sorry with um, with bowling. Uh, and Illinois Representative Ryan Spang will be with me as well. Uh, then I'm doing these, perhaps our viewers who watch the midday see me doing these interviews from time to time. We thought we'd mention them on, on Friday nights as well. So this week you see coming up Wednesday, I'll talk to Chastin Buttigieg. He just wrote a young version of I Have Something to Tell You, which is kind of his coming out book. He's the mm -hmm. husband, of course, of Secretary of Transportation, Pete, Pete mm -hmm. Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan I just wrote a great new book about Martin Luther King called ML, uh, MLK, a, um, a Life. We'll talk about that on Thursday on the midday, midday fix. Okay. All right. Your Thanks, week's Paul. All laid Thank out. you, guys. Have okay. a great weekend. You too.